Hi, Mike. Thanks for coming on the podcast. Thank you for having me. Yeah, you're welcome. Look, where, where are you based in the US? So I live in Los Angeles currently. Been out here for about 10 years now. Yeah. And, it, and you enjoy the lifestyle out there? Yeah, I like it. I mean, I love swimming outside. So yeah. for me, it's kind of, I have to be somewhere where I can swim in the sun. That's one of the most <laughs> enjoyable things for me. Absolutely. So. And are you back in the water doing much swimming after, I know California was in a pretty strong COVID lockdown, but are things back to normal now? Kind of, kind of. I mean, for me, I was lucky because we had where I live, our community pool, which is a 25 yard, like six lane pool, outdoor pool. Um, they didn't really close it down too bad. They just limited the numbers going in and it's, it's an outdoor pool. So um, so I, we kind of got lucky. It was like one of the only pools that was like open in, cause it's, it's a private pool, but it's, it's, so it was nice that I kept swimming throughout COVID for the majority of it. So, but yeah, they were, we were pretty much locked down out here for a good amount of time. I know most gyms and public pools were definitely closed down, but can't keep me out of the water. So <laughs> <laughs> I know. And are you close to the ocean as well? Yeah, yeah, it's about half a mile, so. Perfect. But yeah, for me, it's the water out here is a little chilly, so it's not it's not my favorite. I'm not like that ocean swimmer, right. pool swimmer. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so no open water races for you? Um, I've done a couple, but not not a primary. Yeah, I'm more of a, a breaststroke <laughs> kind of guy, so. <laughs> Of course. So I, I wanted to, we've got a lot to talk about. I wanted to start with your Olympic journey. Um, mm -hmm. Tell us how or why you competed for Bulgaria and then, and then for the US. So how did that all come right. about? Right. So I was born in Bulgaria. My dad actually, so he was a swimmer. He swam for Bulgaria in the 1980 Olympics. So that's how I got into swimming, of course. Yeah. Uh, started in Bulgaria and then we moved when I was nine so that was in the mid 90s um, to Champaign Illinois and I was learning the language didn't know any English at the time and you know by the time that all kind of was getting sorted learning English and getting assimilated in, in our new culture with my mom and dad um, that's when I kind of started well I continued to swim but the first time on an actual swim team was when I was 11. So right. yeah, we, yeah. But anyway, so yeah, I guess started swimming in Bulgaria for Bulgaria. Um, that was, I think the first international swim meet or the first swim meet representing Bulgaria was in 2001, I was 16, went to the European junior championships. And of course, you know, thanks to my dad, because we were still Bulgarian citizens, of course. And Without family back so it was like hey let's see if we can make the the home team for Bulgaria at the time yeah so and little by little it was it was him and I going to competitions okay. so he was you know as as my coach and then as team Bulgaria's coach a small team but so yeah what's what's the state of swimming like in Bulgaria at the moment I'm not too sure I follow a little bit of it. Um, I just, I know we had some, a really good butterfly in the Olympics. Um, so there's, there's, and we had a very good freestyler. So there's a couple of swimmers that since my day, almost, almost what, 15 years ago now, almost <laughs> uh, 13, I guess, since the last time I represented Bulgaria, 2008 at the Olympics. But um, yeah, I think it's up and coming. Um, yeah. As much swimming as I follow, you know, whatever time I have to see. So, but I'm excited that it's, that you, we have swimmers at the Olympics. Yeah. So that's, I'm, I'm stoked about that. Absolutely. And then what made you change from Bulgaria to um, representing the U.S.? What was sort of the design? Right. Well, we became citizens. So I became a citizen and it was a dual citizen in 2006 so I represented Bulgaria in the 04 Olympics and I continued to swim. We were living here. I went to Northwestern. So yeah. this was my home now yes. at the time. So 
and I it was always my dream ever since moving here to be on on the US team. So um I decided, well, so this is this is my new home. Yeah. Let's see if you know, I I kind of also wanted to level up my uh my swimming game. I could have probably represented Bulgaria for a long time, but I don't know if I would have gone as fast after that. Okay. I, after 2008, when I made that sports citizenship, I could probably still be swimming for Bulgaria. Um, but, you know, I wanted to, I, I needed that extra oomph, that extra push. And, and I wanted to make the U.S. team. So it was just a, a double like that, yeah. double motivating factor. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Awesome. So who did you, after you finished um, training with your dad, who coached you in America? So, because I went to Northwestern. So Bob Grosseth, he was our coach. He was a head coach at Northwestern. Uh, Sergio Lopez was there just for my freshman year. Um, and then after that, um, I moved to train with Frank Bush in Tucson, Arizona, wow. at the University of Arizona. Um, so I, I swam with him. I also trained with Ryan Lochte after I graduated from Northwestern in 08. I moved down to Gainesville to train with Greg Troy for a little under a year. So I was down there. Um, I came back to a little bit of grad school at Northwestern. And then I decided after 2008, like I was either going to be done with swimming and continue with grad school, or I was going to just level up, try to make the U S team and go to a place where there was a really good post training uh, program. And that was the university of Arizona at the time. Um, big post-grad group there so um and and frank bush he was he was the u.s team's coach for years so that was the progression after that i moved i made my way down to um or i guess up to los angeles yeah. um and that was at usc with trojan swim club and dave salo um so as the post-grad training group was kind of trickling out at the University of Arizona around 2010, 2011, as Frank retired, he was a new head coach. So, um, and I was coming to competitions here. I had a friend, Marcus Rogan, who swam for Austria, um, the backstroker. And so we became friends. We were friends for a while and I would come visit him, train here, stay with him. And I was like, man, this is cool. This is probably a good upgrade, like leveling up my, my yeah. swimming career. And so I made my way to LA and the, the beginning of 2011. So and I was training with Dave Salo for the next six years after that. Yeah. So you've really experienced quite a few different programs uh, along your journey. Right. Yeah. Right on. Mm -hmm. And which one do you think, looking back now, which one did, did the most for you? Well, um, that's an interesting question. They both, I think, at, that, at the point of my life where I was at, just growth-wise, mentally, physically, all of that as a person, I think it all worked out really well. And each one was the best for me at the time. Yeah. Um, I obviously spent you know, the longest amount of time outside of Northwestern which was a, a tie between living in Chicago, training at Evanston with Bob Grosseth for six years, um, five, and then USC with Dave Salo. So, um, but I knew that I wanted to end up kind of towards the, the West Coast. I love the, the lifestyle out here, you know, just outside, warm, obviously swimming in the sun every day. Uh, yeah. So I just... It was really good to be at Georgia Swim Club for that that amount of time. Of course. What what were you studying at Northwestern? So I was a human biology major. Right. Mm-hmm. Yep. And have you gone on to any post grad sort of qualification? Yeah. Yeah. So I got I I went and I got my uh, MBA years ago in human resource management, and yeah. then now I'm I'm finishing up my uh, physical therapist assistant program okay. here in in LA. So. Yeah. Um, I'm at the very tail end of that, taking my licensing exam, my boards in at the beginning of, of next year. So, oh, good. We'll see. Maybe that'll be the end of my school. I don't know. <laughs> we'll see. <laughs> you sound like a lifelong studier. I think that's a good thing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Love it. That's awesome. Gotta, 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 gotta keep it. Gotta, gotta keep, keep learning. It. You know. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. 
Tell us what the um, experience in Athens and Beijing was like. What, what was the better of the two Olympics for you? What did you find when you got there? Yeah, so 2004, Athens, um, it was, there were two vastly different experiences. One, it was my first time. I was 19. Yeah. You know, I swam with, you know, I was kind of like starstruck, you know, swimming with Ian Thorpe. Uh, you know, so it was just like, it was really cool to be, I saw the 200 free. That was my first event <laughs> in at the Olympics, you know, and uh, yeah. I remember I was out in 52 and back in a minute. So I died, but, <laughs> <laughs> but I made top 30. So I don't know, back, back then that was an okay time. Right. Nowadays, yeah. now, nowadays that's, <laughs> it's like top, top 1000. Um, but yeah, so the experience was just a little bit different um in Athens they didn't we didn't like our air conditioning didn't work our air conditioner didn't work in at the Olympic village uh, they were still trying to figure it out I, the <laughs> village wasn't like quite done when when all the athletes went in there um but it was just it was cool to be just like I said I was a little starstruck and it was just what I remember was it the weather was really dry in terms of my um and so, like, I remember getting out of the, the pool and I'd be like, my lungs would be burning because it was just, I'd never experienced that kind of, you know, competitive environment in Greece. But then Beijing, I was, I was much more of a developed swimmer at the time, not like starstruck. So I was, I was there, you know, to compete and to, to try to, and I made the semi there. Um, but it was, yeah, it was just a vastly different experience seeing the different athletes, the different culture. Uh, the Olympic Village was way different. Uh, there, there were a lot more rules than there were in at the Olympic Village in um, in Athens. Yes. Uh, but I just what one of my memories was the hundred breaststroke, and that was when I got eleventh. I missed the final by less than a tenth. Oh. And I remember it was because of the finish. The way that it was a two and a half, I think, three meter deep pool. And the tees, there was a double T, you know, at the bottom of the pool. Right. And and I just barely, I thought the wall was like right there at the finish, oh. but just and I lifted my head just a little bit because I thought the wall was like right there. And I was like, you know, to this day, you know, when I'm coaching my swimmers that I work with here, I'm always like, hey, head down until you touch that wall. Yeah. But um I, so I kind of can relate to Michael Kavik and Phelps because I feel like Kavik did the same thing. He yeah. lifted his head and, you know, that was, that cost him, that cost him the race there. Yeah. But yeah, there was a little optical illusion. <laughs> I feel like I should have <laughs> maybe swam more to, to nail my finishes down. Yeah. Um, Cause every pool is different. You know, every, the environment is different, even though it's, it's, it's water and it's 50 meters and they're about the same depth in most international competitions yeah. it's still so like i would most of the time in my competitive swimming career outside of the olympics in addition to the olympics but swimming in the warm-up pool not necessarily swimming in the competition just racing in the competition pool so yes. i guess you know giving advice to other swimmers just make sure you're swimming in the competition pool you know, and, and really know how things are working, the depth perception of the flags in backstroke, for example, yeah. um, right? Um, not that I, except for I am, because, you know, if they're a little bit lower, your depth perception is you're going to feel like the wall is further away. Uh -huh. The flags are higher, you're going to feel like you took half a stroke and the wall is, you know, there. Yeah. So even though they're the same distance from the wall, but so... Yeah. That, that's good advice, actually. I, I think you forget, but when you go to different pools around the place, the water feels different as well. Have you ever experienced right. that? Right. Yeah. 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 Definitely. The water, the water temperature. Yeah. Um, I'm not sure. I guess you're right. The chemistry wise in the water, if it's a little bit more chlorinated, I think when there's a lot of chlorine in the, in the water, I think it makes it more bubbly. Like there's a lot more like bubbles that linger in the pool that or it's bromine. I'm not really sure. It's some, some yeah. chemical that makes it like a little bit more bubbly. So I remember we're like doing relays and the swimmer would be sprinting in and I'd be diving in and I'm like, you know, dive in and it's like really, really bubbly. So, yeah. 
yeah. know if anybody else can relate, but I've, I've had conversations like this with other swimmers where we're like, man, it's so bubbly. And that that's going to yeah. be a different feel. You yeah. Know? Yeah, absolutely. So. And were you happy with that hundred breaststroke um, swim in Beijing? Other than the. It was outside of the finish. Yeah. 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 I mean, it was my best place. Uh, yeah. at the olympic games um you know i had better races throughout my swimming career mm-hmm. yards short course um short course meters at the world championships um representing the u.s at the european championships when i was representing bulgaria yeah. um, so to me it's there's so many different races i just tap back into that memory it's yeah. hard for me to really pick out like one specific race i think if i had to what probably would have been my my first one when i broke the american record in the 100 yard breast yeah. was jeremy lynn's record and that was the one where i was you know since i was a little boy yeah. thinking about that time and like you know being like amazed how anybody could swim breaststroke that fast and then you know being able to to get that record that was and, and it was like my first like really really amazing swim Yes. senior year of college so that's probably my favorite swim but a lot of other a lot of other great swims that i remember yeah whether that was from the olympics or, or world championships or just even local meets you know so do you prefer the short course yards or long course meters what's your favorite sort of uh that's, that's a that's a that's a great question for breaststroke long yeah. course is great i i my pull downs were pretty good so yards that was kind of a forte um but long course i really love the the 200 im it's just you're just gunning it for a length at a time you know no stopping um so that was probably that would probably be my my favorite is more more of an im long course and then more of stroke breaststroke short course yeah yeah absolutely Tell us about um, the U.S. trials in 2016 and um, the aftermath of that. How did that all come? Yeah, so, yeah, so 2012, um, I was sixth at the Olympic trials final. And I, that, was, I, that hit me hard. I, I was going to make the team. There was no plan B. I was set. I had no doubt in my mind that I was not going to make the team. I was swimming well years before consistently and yeah. it just like really really got to me um when i didn't make it but yeah. then i kind of like got it together i think three weeks later at the u.s open i spent a time that would have made the team i was a lot more relaxed yeah and but you know as it goes and then 2016 i think at that time by by then i was kind of a little bit on the way out of uh, the sport in a sense wow. um I thought I would, I was still gunning for it. I was training, I was training well, but probably mentally I was getting on the, on the, on the closing out of the professional swimming scene as much as I loved, loved and loved swimming. Um, just it's, you know, I could go on a a lot for this, you know, your mental health and, um, physical health all, you know, those two go hand in hand. So I think at that time I was, I wasn't quite as sharp mentally as I was before. It was kind of like I was doing well, and then some swims I wasn't doing so well in. And there was like, uh, you know, kind of like bumping heads with myself. So, yeah, it's like, um, go sorry, ahead. Okay, yeah. <laughs> oh, no, that's that was what. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> Afterwards, I kept swimming. I kept swimming after that. Yeah, I think. I don't even remember what I what place I was like it, so I don't need yeah that one kind of like <laughs> it wasn't in the final or in the semi-final right. so it was like um I was just kind of like oh man so I, I kept swimming a little bit after that for the next year or so but yeah it was yeah I probably should have you got to know when to step away that's one thing that's yeah. And I look at these swimmers now, and you know, I see like Tom Shields and and even you know Matt Grievers, you know my roommate from back in college, um, and even you know Ryan Lochte. You know, there's there's <laughs> look how they're still gunning, and there's still you know these older swimmers. You know, there's and even Nathan Adrian. I mean, I know he's yeah. eighteen, but like you know they're in the top. They're they were in the top eight in the finals. 
at the yes. Olympic trials, which is huge. Yeah. And um, so, but for me now, it's, you know, my priorities have shifted and, you know, I, I still am in the sport. I coach a lot. That's, you know, a lot of the time goes, goes to working with swimmers locally in the area. And like I said, talking about physical therapy and doing my personal training and coaching, just strength and conditioning yeah. uh, in, in, in Los Angeles. So, yeah. you know, now my, I'm still in the sport, but not directly, you know, gunning to make, to make the team, which for me, I'm, I'm happy, you know, and going to master's meets. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Let's hopefully, have- hopefully now a little bit more because oh. a little bit more now, because, yeah. you know, we're out of this lockdown, hopefully. And hopefully things are on, you know, this COVID is on its way out so we can start living again <laughs> and going to swim meets, yeah. you know. Yeah. Uh, but I think the last master's meet I was at was in, in Arizona, in Phoenix at the, at the Nationals. Yeah. Right before COVID. That was 2019, 18. Yeah. Because since then, I think there's only been one, for, for the U.S. anyway, one, one Nationals. I think it was this year. Yeah, that's right. Um, yeah. In in Ohio, no, in somewhere, but somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I'm excited. I'm excited, and, and it makes a big difference if it's in somewhere where it's if it's warm, it's sunny out. You know, yeah, going to these, these masters meet, I'm trying to have more fun than uh, than be real serious or even look at the time because yeah. the last time I swam, I think it was a hundred. Yeah, it was a hundred breast. I mean, I won it for the age group, but I thought I went a lot faster than I did. I I felt great. I was like, man, this feels better than when I was swimming, you know, professionally. Yes. Then I look at the time. I'm like, wait, that doesn't make sense. This is, <laughs> <laughs> is that short course meters? No, this was yards. <laughs> <laughs> what what attracted you to have a go at uh, master swimming? Uh, just to stay stay in the in the sport in a sense in a in a sense that to remember that feeling to keep going but not have all this pressure to have the feeling of okay i'm going to a me you know this is how i'm getting ready for it shaving tapering you know (laughs) and you know it's fun i mean maybe at some points it it was not so fun because you kind of like you know you feel like you have to do it but when it's like your choice to be like oh and that makes it a lot more fun you know (laughs) so (laughs) <laughs> um but like i said i love swimming i love the sport uh the camaraderie between you know the friendships that come along with that yes. with the sport of swimming um so that's i mean all of it and masters it's just a lot of fun i mean people are out there and i see all these these older people that are just in amazing shape and they're they're and i look up to that because they might not be going as fast as maybe they were when you when they were younger but they're like they're not giving up hope they're not like okay i didn't make the olympic team now i'm gonna be a mental wreck the rest of my life you know yeah. so it's 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 i think it's healthy i think it's healthy to i mean if you did it professionally for a certain amount of time like a lot of the swimmers do is it's a sport where you do commit you know and you, you and if you make it to the to the higher levels you want to be I don't know if it's healthy to cut it off immediately, you know, yeah. like, let's say, okay, this is my last Olympics. I'm never going to touch the pool again. Yeah. I've, I've met a lot of swimmers like that. And I'm like, oh, I don't know. I don't know how healthy that is, you know, yeah. where it's like, you've done something your whole life and then boom, but maybe, I don't know, but it's not for me. So yeah. personally speaking, that's, I appreciate uh, the sport and I appreciate what it gave me and, yeah. and what it still gives me. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. And I think a lot of people I've spoken to during this COVID lockdown have found that when that pool or when that swimming's taken away because you can't do it because of the lockdown, it really impacted their sort of mental health. And I think a lot of people then were pushed out to, you know, rivers and oceans and lakes and things like that to get that sort of buzz that you get or that endorphins. Right. Of rush with right on. Yeah. So mm-hmm. I I think that's really interesting. I think swimming during this time has exploded. There's just so many people swimming these days. Right, right. Yeah, that feeling, it's, it, you don't really get that kind of feeling 
like you know just walking out in the big crowd having that adrenaline like at the olympics because that's obviously the biggest crowd there was for for us swimmers you know um or or like you know the the u.s olympic trials the australian olympic trials you know bigger countries that have more of a of a spectator uh presence which is like you know you don't get that you know you almost feel like you know this is what rock stars must feel like you know in front of of thousands of people it's just the energy is different the vibe you know and it's like once you you don't get that anymore something's missing it's like wait a minute something is something's not here so i think that that part of that mental health too is being able to to transition out of that and to understand that you got to compartmentalize that and you can find ways to get that same or similar feeling yes and definitely master swimming is is huge because yeah you might not be in front of thousands of, of uh, spectators but you're still getting that feeling you're still swimming with with other olympians or or non-olympians or people that just picked up the sport you know and they're adults and it's, it's like so cool you know yeah. And are just jumping in and yeah. don't care, you know, what time. Because swimming is such an objective sport, you know. It's like yeah. time matters. Yes. But as you for masters, it's like it's more of the attitude. It's more of the spirit. It's more of the the fun, the fun part of it. Time is like. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> I know it's a it's a different way of doing it, isn't it? When you you sort of you might be against a um, a guy or a girl beside you, and different age, mm-hmm. but it all goes on time. So it's right. it's different coming from you know your Olympic background to to dealing with that too, and it sort of takes the pressure off, I believe. Right, hundred percent. Because it's not always your age group that you're in that heat with. Right, exactly. Yeah. yeah. And that's, that's yeah. the fun. I mean, it's like, wait a minute, I'm racing these people that, you know, at one, one point were faster than me or are way older than me. And it's just like, wow, that's so cool. It's just such a, you know, bonding, like unity of human, humans unite through yeah. these things, you know, whether it's through music, through the arts, through sport, like swimming, yeah. um, it, it almost feels like a team because uh, yeah. it's such an individual sport you know i mean unless you're on a relay even then it's not like yeah but it feels like a team when especially masters because you're everybody's doing it because they want to do it you know they, they really are part of that and yeah. and even like making the u.s team i mean <clears throat> we're all come from different parts you know come to unite we become a team for a little bit but then it's like back up you know yeah almost like envy envy other sports where it's like you know they're an actual team you know it's kind of like college i think that's why it's such a high energy uh like ncaa swimming in america it's just it's so it's so fun because you become a part you become a team yeah whereas the olympic team or the world championship team or the national team you're you're seeing each other at some points of the year but you know yeah. You don't know one another. I mean, maybe you find out about each other from like training camp and then go into the competition, but yes. it's not the same like college, you know? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And what master's club do you swim out of when you're swimming, when you're competing in master's? So it's Golden Road Aquatics out here in, um, oh. in Los Angeles. Yeah. 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 We're sponsored by a beer company, Golden Road <laughs> Brewery. <laughs> <laughs> and do you more fun. do you train with them or do you have your own squad i train with them every now and again i train with them every now and again um they're a little bit further from where i live now so and you know traffic in la is not the prettiest thing so um I, whenever i can make it out there i do and with covid i mean we weren't we weren't training at all so before then whenever i could make it yeah a lot of fun swimming with that team but i'm i'm hoping that we can start to do that again more in more depth because things are you know things are opening back up and the the covid rules lockdown is getting a little bit less in yes. la county so yeah it's looking up absolutely <laughs> and do you have a, a favorite set that you do that is just sort of your go-to set that you can share with yeah. us yeah. yeah yeah so one of my favorite sets is 150 two 100s and then 350s and i mix it up with with gear without gear 
Um, yeah. So f- let's say I'm feeling I'm feeling an I am day. So um, I'll do the 150. I'll do the middle 50 fly. Yeah. I'll do the two 100s I am, the second one faster than the first. And then the 350s, I'll just go fly. Wow. And then the next round, I'll do that 150 and then the middle 50 back. Two ones I am again, same way, second one faster than the first, but a little faster. And then the 350 backstroke. And then wow. same for breast. And then same for free. And then some days I'll just feel like doing a breast set. So I'll I'll do the first and last 50 breaststroke of the 150. I'll do the two 100s, all breaststroke with like paddles or just fins with a dolphin kick. And then the 350s, I'll just shed all gear and just do a 350s descend one to three breaststroke. So that's one of my favorite sets. And I, I can mix it up, throw any variety in there. Like I said, I keep it light and fun with fins and paddles. Yes. Um, sometimes I'll get together with a friend. We'll do that set short rest on, yep. you know, a freestyle or let's, something like that. Yeah, that sounds good. I like that set. That's great. Yeah. 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 It's not too long. You know, you can, yeah. you can, you can do it as many times as you want or just like two or three times and yeah. <laughs> very versatile set. Yeah. And, and how much sort of strength and conditioning work do you do alongside the swimming? It depends. It depends. Like right now I'm, I'm working uh, in my last clinical portion of the physical therapy school. So oh. that's keeping me pretty busy um, working with my swimmers. So nowadays I'm pretty much swimming with the people that I train, that I coach. Yes. Um, so very rarely getting in with friends before I would like get in with friends or go to like golden road or the, our master's team and train with them. Yeah. Um, but nowadays it's more of, well, whenever I can get it in, let's get it in. Uh, then I, I coach high intensity interval training classes in Santa Monica. Okay. So, you know, I'm demoing, uh, you know, with weights. So I'm, I'm lifting, you know, I'm setting up the gym, uh, yep. for each day, depending on the day. So that's a workout, you know, <laughs> dragging <laughs> out kettlebells and things like that. So, yeah, of course. um, but I do miss like having a, a consistent, like lifting strength and conditioning regimen. You know, I used to run. I don't have time for running right now. I'd rather swim, you know, things like that. Where yeah. before when I was, you know, training full time, yeah. you I had this availability to, you know, three days a week to run before I lift, you know, yeah. uh, you know to get that that kind of strength training and more yeah. cardio, more more aerobic. But um so yeah, to answer your question, it's just it's a little bit sporadic nowadays. Yeah. But <laughs> that's okay actually i was that's a good thing that you brought up then do you because there's two trains of thinking with the next question Mm -hmm. um i've just spoken to a few strength and conditioning coaches who said that they like to do that lifting or the strength portion before they do their cardio Mm -hmm. you just mentioned cardio then lift and i i also like to do cardio before any weights yeah I, I, i mean i just like to warm it up you know, I like to get a little sweaty before I start to, to yeah. lift, you know, heavier weights. So I'm not doing like a massive amount of cardio, you know, mm-hmm. before. Yes. Um, but I mix it up. And I think, you know, as swimmers, you got to have your aerobic capacity up. You got to have your anaerobic capacity up. You know, it's like you can't just train one or the other, right? It's, it's got to be a, a balance of both. So on some days, Yes, I would focus a little bit more on strength training, a little bit less on cardio because the the two different systems. You're burning, your body is using energy in different ways. And then if you want to get actually stronger, you can't do too much cardio because you need to develop that that muscular strength and use the calories to to build that strength that you're consuming. So I think on some days, yeah, go a little bit more cardio with my run into the swim other days shorter run more of a heavy heavier lift strength training and then just maybe a lighter swim or more more strength and power in the water yeah to follow that that lifting session yeah Um, Yeah. good good advice yeah and i wanted to talk about the um the little doco that you made which is called afterlife tell us how that came mm -hmm. about and tell us what afterlife is all about yeah, so it's a mini doc. Um, the way that it came about was years ago, I I shot a commercial for a supplement company. It was an omega-3 brand. 
and uh the cinematographers that were with me to to shoot there was like a, a lifestyle shoot so they kind of like followed me around throughout the day yeah. um and this it was like back when i was training at usc and this is what's happening so i get up in the morning this, this is how i make money you know after you know i'm training clients i'm doing my swim coaching you know i'm i'm training myself you know with yes. with the post-grad group there yeah. and they found that to be you know really interesting they're like man this is this is very interesting so we basically they thought i had a cool story and they're like okay after we're done with this let's talk because i think you know some other people would appreciate this story um so that's how it came about and then we we shot it it took us a couple of years to shoot it was all self-funded okay. so um just and just a beautiful, beautiful job that they did. Um, and I thought, man, this is going to be a cool, a cool thing to to have documented, you know, my swimming career and, and my dad too. I mean, the relationship I had and have with him and my mom and how we came from this little small town in Bulgaria. So it's, that's how it came about. Uh, it, it made a couple um, film festivals. It came out last November. Yeah. It's a mini, so it's 13 and a half, 14 minutes long. But uh, yeah, it's about all the attention span people have these days, anyway. So <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's true. <laughs> and how how could people see it? Like, where where can you um access it? It's on it's through a couple different platforms. Yeah. Um, so it's on Vimeo. Um, right. So you can access it through there, yeah. and the rest is through the film. Uh, we didn't make it to Sundance, but we made it to the California Film Festival in Palm Springs. So wow. if you go to those, uh, the websites for those for last year, uh, mm -hmm. you'll be able to see see the the different minis and the full uh, yeah. documentaries that streamed on there. So oh, awesome. it's called Afterlife. <laughs> yeah, we'll have to put a link, a link to it in the show notes so people can sure. follow up and have a look. Yeah. Right, right. And it, it deals with, not just okay so this is my story but also the the transition from coming out of the sport to yes. transitioning into that kind of compartmentalization of your life and how you can take that to whatever else you're doing and mm -hmm. i think it's it's not just a story about you know mike alexandrov or just that but mo mostly and yeah mainly for other just humans the human condition of of not just competing i think a lot of people were able to relate to it yes. it wasn't just swimmers so i think that was the the beauty of uh how ryan rundle he was the director yeah. and producer so um did a really really good job of having other ideas not just okay it's only just swimming swimming this is what happened in my swimming career you know it's yes. it's more of what was going on in my head yeah just a little bit more in depth than just documenting just what happened you know so no i think it's 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 sounds fantastic i mean a lot of swimmers have trouble transitioning from that swimming life particularly when yeah like you you've been at such a high level into um i suppose like a normal life Per se. but so many skills that you have from that time can be used in everyday life and it, i think it's really right. that people can view that and and learn from it yeah yeah and it's i think a lot of people with different careers you know life is just the way i've seen it is so much about change like there's so much change going on not there's not a whole lot of like flatline consistency i mean maybe in your lifestyle but yeah. You were all getting older at the same rate, you know. Yes. Um, it's things are changing, the seasons, COVID. You know, there's all things that are going to come and hit you from different angles, and how you can react, and how you can use your former talents or strengths, and yeah. how you can work on your weaknesses. All in the meantime, I think that also showed it in the in the mini, which was why so many people were able to relate to to my story, which is a cool story and there's so many unique stories you know that's yes. i think the beauty of athletes and and the sport of swimming is because 
it's very individualized. I mean, yeah, like we said earlier, there's a lot of team that can go along with it, but yeah. a lot of it is actually very individualized and everybody has their own story, which is very cool. Yes. Um, yeah. Well, that, that's the whole idea behind this podcast, I suppose. Just talking to all these different swimmers about their journey and they're all different but similar, I suppose, in the same way right. they all have such a passion for swimming, which obviously right you do as well. And that really comes through. Right. Good. <laughs> <laughs> you do too. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I think um, most most people I speak to, yeah, on this on this podcast do. And there's a lot of people out there listening who just love swimming. And I think the great thing about you joining us today is that you've given us a bit of an insight into your journey, which is wonderful. And I really thank you for coming on and, and sharing that with us. No, you're welcome. Thank you so much for having me. Yeah, it's been a pleasure talking to you. Very good. Thank you so much, Danielle. Okay. Thanks. Take care, Mike. Okay. I'll talk to you later. Bye. Yeah. Bye.